Today we take a look at the Canon EOS 1300D aka Canon Rebel T6 as known in the States. Is it good for vlogging or for a YouTube channel, especially as a beginner? Want to find out more? Roll the intro. Hey name tags, welcome. This is Ash from Here My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. On this channel, we do repairs, reviews, and tutorials of tech, including sharing entrepreneur tips and strategies to help you unleash your true potential. In the description below, you will find timestamps for your convenience if you want to skip ahead to specific parts of the video, but I would be grateful if you watched the whole video at least the first time. If your interest is in photography rather than videography, then I can definitely recommend this Canon EOS 1300D or Rebel T6 for any beginner photographer. And you can completely ignore this video tutorial as it will not be applicable to you. But if you want to stay and find out about videography in terms of this camera, then feel free to stay. Before we start, I need to make these four disclaimers. Number one, I am not a professional photographer. I prefer doing videos, so I will be coming and talking from that perspective, especially as a one-person crew. Although this Canon EOS 1300D has very good recording video abilities at 1080p, it does lack some features which makes vlogging and running a YouTube channel a lot more difficult than it needs to be, especially as a one-person crew. You will get the job done, but you will be working hard rather than smart. On the topic of video, this is capable of 1080p at 30fps full HD recording. You can get 720p 60fps, but if you're looking for above 1080p like 4K or above 30fps like 60fps and above, then you should be looking elsewhere. While you don't need a DSLR for vlogging or for YouTube, there are cheaper and easier options out there, but if you're considering a DSLR, then this video is going to be for you. Number two, this review is not going to be a full technical review, rather it's going to be a practical review of its features in terms of vlogging and for a YouTube channel. However, the features I'm going to mention in today's video is going to be applicable to any other make and model of DSLR camera, even mirrorless camera, or things like point and shoot or bridge cameras. Okay, disclaimer number three, the reason this is not a technical review and rather a practical review is because I'm not a professional photographer nor a professional videographer. You may or may not know, but my journey into computer repair world was from an amateur point of view and I was actually a nurse for 10 years of my professional career and I switched over and you can watch that video somewhere up there. As much as I was a newbie into tech repair, at the moment I'm a noob when it comes to DSLR. Although I've been researching for a while, but I'm not geared enough to be able to give you professional tutorials or advice or technical reviews on uh, videography, photography or filming gear. But I hope to be able to do this in the near future. However, I do believe this tutorial will be helpful for those who are considering vlogging or starting a YouTube channel as a beginner. Because this is a type of info that I wish I had when I was looking into it about a year ago. Disclaimer number four. Don't judge the quality of this camera by the uploads that I have been doing on my YouTube channel and in the pictures you're about to see, because that would be down to my lack of professional skills, including controlling the lighting and the environment and fine tuning the settings on the camera. This is not only my personal opinion, you can ask any professionals and you can watch video tutorials on the topic, but any camera in the hands of a skilled professional will produce excellent quality footage, whether it's a picture or a video. Saying that, I am going to hopefully include some pictures which I took early on as an amateur, mainly on auto function. And the first one is going to be a kind of flat, dull picture of my back garden. However, when I went up close and personal, there was a completely different picture painted with a unique story in each picture. Enjoy. So I bought this uh, exactly one year ago in September 2016 from Amazon for about £300 or $400, including the kit lens. That was bought as an emergency because the next day I was actually traveling abroad. So I thought I would get a camera as I was already looking into DSLR and I would learn to use it while I was abroad. Unfortunately, because of the emergency, I bought it under misinformation and lack of proper research. The reason I was looking to DSLR was as an upgrade from my iPhone that I was using for my YouTube channel. 
but when I went there abroad, I did not get a chance to learn and use a camera. And when I came back to UK, it was so overwhelming, including we had this family health issue. So I left it aside and continued to use my iPhone 5 and webcam for most of the tutorials up until recently. I am now in the process of setting this camera and this video is going to explain the reasons why. And if any of you want to buy it from me, feel free to make me a reasonable offer. Details of how I'm selling it is going to be below in the description. But if you're not in UK, there will be some additional shipping charges which you're going to have to incur. So do bear that in mind. Also, I will not be accepting returns for this and I'm not desperate to sell. So I will ignore unreasonable offers. I would rather keep this as a secondary backup or B-roll camera or even as a photography camera rather than accept an unreasonable offer. Okay, now here are the four main features which are lacking in this camera, which in my opinion makes it a not suitable camera for a vlogging or YouTube channel. Feature number one, the lack of an articulated or flip out screen. Now this screen here is a fixed screen. It also doesn't have a touch screen function, but that's not a problem for me. The ability to see yourself or to see the subject you're recording, especially as a one man crew is prime. So many times when I was filming, I was out of frame or the subject was out of frame or there was a problem with the focus or the exposure or the lighting. And I wasn't aware of that until I saw the footage afterwards and had to do so many reshoots just because of that. Complete waste of time. Even to start a video, to place yourself in front of the camera and the proper framing and the proper height and the proper distance and the focus is a pain in the butt. Okay, if you do have a camera person behind it, that may not be a problem. Or if you are able to set the camera and the tripod in a fixed position and you can set yourself in a fixed permanent marked position, then you only have to set the settings once and forget about it, you're done. However, if you do need to relocate yourself or the subject, or you need to move the camera, then you're in for a headache. And vlogging, especially on the go, is out of the question. There are other ways to see yourself while you're recording, like you can connect the camera to an external monitor. And in this case, you have a mini HDMI port here, and you can use a mini HDMI to HDMI cable and connect it to an external monitor, like maybe a 10 inch uh, external monitor, which can mount on top of uh, here with a horseshoe mount, or you can mount it on the tripod somehow, like on a frame for a camera. There are many ways. Apart from that, there are also other ways that you can actually see yourself without an external monitor, but connecting through a computer, etc. So if you guys want to know how to see yourself or focus on yourself, if you're a one-man crew, then let me know in the comments below and I'm gonna do a tutorial on that. The second feature that's lacking is the autofocus during video recording. You can manually focus during video, if you're filming yourself, there is a button you can switch from autofocus to manual focus. So if you're filming yourself, you will constantly need to readjust, you know, go to the camera. And if you have a camera person, they will have to constantly need to readjust when you're focusing on specific subjects. It will be easier if you have a camera person, but it's going to be a pain in the butt either way, especially if you're a one man crew. The third feature which is lacking, in my opinion, is a mic input for an external microphone. Sure, there is an internal mic, but like with most DSLR cams or most other types of cameras, the onboard microphone and the audio quality you get from there absolutely sucks. Of course, it's best practice to record your audio separately and then you can sync it in post using the onboard mic of the camera. You can record from an external recorder like this Zoom H1 recorder and you can use an external mic like this uh, Boya BYM1 microphone and that's going to give you a lot more clean and professional audio. However, there are occasions when you're going to have a deadline and you continue to film, edit and upload a video as an emergency. And if there's an input mic on a camera like this, you can actually use an external microphone and you will be able to film something very quickly and upload it without doing any post editing to anything and it will be acceptable quality. I hope I can actually put a link up there or down below of an example of this kind of shooting to illustrate this process. So please check back later if I've been able to upload a video tutorial on that topic. And number four, last but not least, is the lack of long or continuous video shooting. What I mean is this, after about 12 minutes, this camera shuts off and you can restart it. And I'm told it's because of the heat or overheating. 
at 1080p recording at 30 fps and I get about 12 minutes or so video recording and then it just shuts down. Now there is also an issue with the type of SD card you use. Currently I'm using a SanDisk SD card class 10 at 80 Mbps. If you use any other type of lower class card or the transfer rate is less, you may have an issue because initially I was using a card, I wasn't aware of the full features or specifications. I was getting only about one minute of footage and I didn't know the reasons for it. When I looked it up, turns out you do need to use a card with, with higher transfer rates. Now I'm not well informed enough to be able to tell you exactly what type of SD card you need to look for your specific camera. So please do some research. Now you might think it's not too bad if you get about 12 minutes of video footage, then you could time yourself maybe, you know, like blocks of 10 minutes and then manually stop it and then start again. Well, in theory, you'd be correct, but in practice, you'd be a fool. Unless there is a technique that I'm not aware of, please feel free to school me. So these were the four main features lacking in this camera, which makes it not a suitable camera for vlogging or for a starter YouTube channel. And those are the reasons why I'm selling this camera even though I've barely used it, still in very mint condition. I was planning to keep it as a secondary backup or B-roll camera, or even as a photography camera. It's best that someone else who needs it makes use of it because it's probably just gonna end up sitting in my camera bag. I've actually recently bought another camera which I'm using to film this episode. That's what I'm filming on. The choice I went for might actually surprise you. If you want a guide on which camera to start with as a first time YouTuber or vlogger, especially if you're considering a DSLR, then let me know in the comment section below. I will do a tutorial on what I would recommend as a first camera. And lastly, even if you had a camera person, I would still not recommend this 1300D. And I think the reasons should be pretty obvious if you've watched this video till now. But think in terms of, let's say your camera person was not available or they were available, but they could actually just set you up and because you would have a different camera with uh, autofocus for video recording and the ability to see yourself and longer continuous shooting then you would be able to carry on the filming and they could be doing something else and you would be independent of them and that would be very helpful in terms of time management so you should really look for a camera any make any model that's got these features as a minimum the ones we'll talk about in the video and call it a day. In conclusion, this Canon EOS 1300D or Rebel T6 is an excellent entry-level photography camera that I would recommend if you're considering doing photography as an amateur. Although it has a decent 1080p video recording, it has all these limitations which we talked about, i.e. no ability to see yourself, the lack of video autofocus during shooting, no external mic input, and it shuts off after about 12 minutes of recording. And those make this camera not suitable for vlogging or for a YouTube channel. Please look for a camera that's got these features in any other make and model. Like I mentioned before, Canon is not paying me to do this. This is my opinion. I bought this for my own money and I'm not being sponsored by Canon or by anyone else. That's the end of today's video. Couple of final notes before the outro. This video was not sponsored. You will find show notes and links to everything I've talked about in the description below and in the cards above. Any affiliate link to sites like Amazon or eBay is clearly identified and if you click them and follow through with the purchase, it will not cost you anything extra and you will help the channel with a small kickback so it's a win-win for everyone. One more thing, if you want to ask a question, please be as specific as possible, including all the relevant details. You can check out this video, which I did called The Art of Asking the Wrong Question, where I address this very common problem so we can help each other out without getting frustrated and wasting time. That's it for today, folks. Like, dislike, share this vid and comment below. And if you found the content helpful, consider subscribing to help the channel and keep you notified of future videos. Once again, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for watching. This was Ash from Hill My Tech helping you go from newbie to techie. Until next time, peace out.